Yeah, good morning. I represent Zunum Aero. We are a, a, um, an electric aviation startup out of the other Washington, uh, Seattle. We're backed by Boeing and JetBlue, as well as the Department of Commerce Clean Energy Fund in, in Washington State. And uh, I don't think I can deliver on this, uh, or I most likely can't deliver on getting to disagreement in this talk. Because what we're doing is actually not really a breakthrough. It's not new physics. It's the same old physics applied in a slightly different way to the same problem. How do you move people comfortably, conveniently, preferably without emissions, and cheaply? And um, in the process of doing that, we think we can help eliminate about half of emissions from commercial aviation. The half that comes from the 80% of trips that are less than 1,500 miles. We want to bring affordable high-speed mobility to tens of thousands and probably more communities through providing them with electric propulsion of the planes that they use to travel. Before I tell you how that's possible, I want to take a little bit of historical perspective because it's important to understand where we are today. Jet engines has been a fantastic thing for humanity. It's powered a boom in global air travel. A number of miles traveled have doubled over 15 years, and it's connected the world in, in, a, in a quite unique, unique way. It's, it's done so, and done so in an affordable way for most people by building bigger and bigger planes with bigger and bigger engines. That's one of the features of a jet engine, to be thermodynamically efficient, it needs to fly high, it needs to be big, and it needs to fly for as long as possible. So we kept building these planes that got bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger engines, with the design point for a longer and longer travel distance. And uh, the result has been this hub and spoke system that we have today, where 96% of air traffic happens through 1% of airports. And door-to-door um, -door times, in many cases, are actually worse than they were 50 years ago. Because the, the local airstrip that you might, be able, might have been able to fly out of back then is not in operation anymore. There are thousands of communities that could have had high-speed connectivity that don't. And uh, a lot of this is kind of stacked up now against high-speed rail, very inflexible and capital-heavy alternatives. So we wanted to provide a, an alternative solution to this, which is where we think we're headed, because we think this is physics-based. This is not, you don't have to believe anything particularly weird to think that this is going to happen. Um, yeah. <laughs> no pun or, or, or punch anywhere intended. Uh, electric propulsion, and i be, be very precise. If you look at these planes, you can see they, they have these ducted fans sitting, sitting at their tails. Those are electric fans. They look like jet engines, but they're wholly electric. Anyone see the the Star Wars movie where Anakin is a little kid. He raises pods. Yeah, they're kind of like that. <laughs> Except, they, you know, probably a little bit more reliable. That's the idea. Uh, we think we can close this regional transport gap where so many communities today do not have um, a reasonable way to travel distances between, say, 200 miles and 1,000 miles. We think um, we can rival highways and high-speed rail in cost and emissions. Um, most of these legs, you know, in terms of numbers, the 100 to 200 to 300 mile legs that are quite common uh, across the world, we can fly already today with current technology, current battery densities at zero emissions. <coughs> in which case, the jet fuel that you carry, because this is a hybrid powered plane, is going to be only a power reserve, never going to get used. We think we can erode the, the scale economics of aviation such as they are today, the hub and spoke system, where you fly from where you're not to where you're not going. And you have to connect with some sort of, you know, oftentimes carbon producing or carbon emission producing transport at, at every end, at both ends. And thus, we, we will reduce travel time and fares. So the door to door time, door to door cost is going to go down um, quite remarkably. And we have a path, we think, between these three aircraft, you see the, the ZA-10, that's the small one top uh, in, the, in the bottom there, and the, the ZA-100, the one far there. Um, we think we can do that by 2030. 
The first thing we're going to do is roll out and start selling in 2022-23 a 12-passenger uh, plane. Looks like this. Um, it's got an operating cost which is less than a third of anything comparable today. And it's partly because it's powered mostly electrically, uh, partly because it is designed with modern aircraft design to fly the shorter distances that we targeted to. Max range of 700 miles. You'd be surprised how many operators are actually looking for this very plane right now, because so few aircraft producers bother to go after this market the last couple of years, okay, a couple of decades. Again, because of what I just showed you. Its cruise speed is going to be a little bit less than a jet engine or jet plane, but at these ranges, it doesn't matter. What matters is the setup time at either end. Do you have to go through heavy duty security? Well, it turns out if you fly a plane in the US with less than 30 passengers, security is a much lighter deal. Uh, you can park your car, you know, pick up your drink or your coffee, carry your own luggage into the plane and get going. And with a takeoff distance of 2,200 feet, or, or, we, or we can fly out of tens of thousands of airstrips that are some of them in operation, some of them out of operation. But very easy to set up a fairly inexpensive, low upfront investment regional carrier using this. Eventually, we will scale to 80% of all of current departures, uh, less than 1,500 miles. And you see we have a, a roadmap here. The first plane, 12 passengers, 2020, early 2020 is the next one, 30 to 50 passengers, 2026. And finally, the ZA-100 in 2030. And, um, since we are using a hybrid, i.e. a range extender running on jet fuel or biodiesel, takes over when the electric battery is depleted, we can gradually shift as battery densities get better. We are not dependent on any particular breakthrough in battery technology. We start now. This is totally feasible today. And as batteries get better, we can extend the range that's flown emission-free, and we can eventually eliminate the uh, range extender. This puts us on a path to zero emissions for regional air travel uh, by 2040. This is actually now a uh, government declaration from the, the government of Norway. Their new coalition government in February this year announced using our physics, uh, by the way, because we, we, we showed them uh, how this works. And they have a government declaration that Norway is going to eliminate all um, emissions from, from domestic travel below 1,000 kilometers by 2040. Eventually, this is going to also extend to longer ranges, but it's actually a much harder problem. And the reason, if you wonder, why, why has nobody really gone after this previously, even though the physics are there today? We think it's because most people have been focusing on the right side of that equation. How do you put a battery in a 737? Electric motors don't care about scale. Jet engines need to be really big. If you start with the fact that electric motors don't care about scale, you can do this. And you get to do it in a way that's good for so many different, in so many different ways. Two to four times faster travel times door to door, much lower fares, competing in many ways with road travel. You can fly to a lot more communities that are not connected, that are this, this, disconnected today. And it's quiet, 20 decibels less, and it's green. Yeah. So with that, Thanks for having us here. I hope I've managed to inspire you. And if there is any. <laughs> right. And if there is any um, creative disagreement about this, I'm very happy to take questions afterwards. Thank you.